internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got my friend Gary online. Gary, you there? Yes, I am. And what was the last name again? Walters. Walters. Somehow I got Winters out of it. You remember Jonathan Winters? I do. I was going to mention <laughs> that myself. <laughs> Maybe that's where it came in. He's channeling through the cosmos. So, um, like I mentioned, I don't do these real long because people have that valuable time commodity that we're all in being controlled under, you know, the 24 hours in a day thing. So I just want to get to know who you are and what you do. And I understand you're from New York, right? Is that correct? Whoa. No? Um, actually, my publisher is from all over the place, Ida Keating. She's also my editor. She's currently in California. I live in Canada. How did I ever get New York? I don't know. <laughs> You're from Canada. I, I like New York, although I've never been. Yeah, I've been through there, and um, we're neighbors. You know, I'm in Minnesota, so that's yeah. just by Canada there, eh? Yeah. Well, we are real neighbors because I'm just north of you in Winnipeg. Yeah, I, you know, I've been about nine miles from the border, and I never stepped over it. I never, so I've never done Canada. I've been to Indonesia. I've been to Europe. I've been to Brazil. I've never been to Canada. Oh, Got to get my up. butt up there. Come on up there. Bring my fishing pole, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's right. And your rain gear, too, because it's been raining, according to Bing Weather, about 23 days out of 30 in July for the past oh, yeah, 30 yeah. years. It's like Seattle. We've had a lot of it down here, too, so there's that... Global warming thing is doing something yeah. with the rain or whatever. Uh oh. Looking <laughs> forward to Al Gore's second film coming out on my That's birthday, right. interestingly enough, on sports. So. No, what did he? What is he calling that again? An inconvenient sequel. That's what it is. Something like that. <laughs> Anyways, so are you married? You got kids? Single. I uh, was in a relationship. We're still friends, but no children. No. Okay. That was good to be friends. Now, yeah. we chatted a little bit earlier, and from what I understand, you are an author. Is that correct? That's right. That's okay, right. We're, getting on the, we're getting on the same page here now. I don't know where I got some of my information, but that's the way the Internet works. You know, there's stuff all over the place. And yeah. So that writing thing, my wife does some writing. I know that it's uh, – I have a real hard time reading and writing, so God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> you more of a video guy, video audio. I do. I can, I can grab a, like she'll read a book and I'll just watch the video and I just, I can just summarize it in about five minutes and then I move on to the next thing. So Nerd, I'm definitely yeah. a video kind of guy. Well, you know, honestly, I, I watch as many documentaries and movies as I do read fiction and nonfiction, at least. How long have you been writing? Uh, off and on for the past several years. Um, a number of years ago when I was living on the west coast of Canada, to create a writing course, but it was a short course. It was the kind of course where, you know, you could take classes in pottery or self-defense or dancing or French cooking, you know, sure. anything offered by the city in the writing department. So I took a course in creative writing and tried writing a bit here and there, and I just hadn't captured enough craft yet. So then I read several books on writing, and then I started again. And at the same time, I started reading fantasy because I really wasn't into fantasy. I was reading Ray Bradbury, um, Neil Gaiman, American Gods, and I realized, well, you know, fantasy can actually act as a metaphor for what's currently going on in your yeah. society, whatever time period you are, wherever you live. Yeah. Um, okay. This is for me. Have you, have you heard of the book, The Celestine Prophecy? I've heard of it, haven't read it. Yeah, I'm, I read it because I was getting onto my spiritual path and I wanted to learn about spirituality. And when I got it, I started reading it and realized it was a fiction book. It was a story. So I yeah. lost a little bit of interest. And then I a little bit more, all of a sudden I realized, oh, this, this is like real spirituality. This is about this story. So then I, I kind of got into it. But writing, that's, uh, that's quite the art because you've got to take what people take in in their eyes and then put it into their head and get them to start to visualize stuff in their brain to, to be able to... Yeah. I have a hard time visualizing like that. My wife loves it. She remembers her dreams and stuff like that. I don't remember my dreams, so I end up doing that experiential thing. Have, have you ever gone to any like uh, writer's retreats? I haven't done that yet. That's yeah, another fascinating forever, thing. All sorts of crazy hours and weekends and whatnot, so There's it's a, hard for me to get there's a big writer's workshop that they do in Ubud, Bali, in, in Indonesia every year. It's huge. Yeah. Writers and readers and 
Writers, readers and writers workshop. It's kind of fascinating. Sounds good. So have you got any works you're doing right now? Any, what are you writing? Uh, well, now I'm starting to gather up some ideas for my second and third book. My book is called The Thorn Beneath the Rose, book one. And now I'm gathering material for book two and book three, doing a lot more research on the internet, reading books, both uh, nonfiction as well as fiction. Um, because there's sort of an arc, not only within each story, but within the three novels itself. So I'm going to be working on book two and book three, and then I'll be done with that eventually. Then I'll move on, hopefully, to something else. Okay. Is it, is it uh, still a secret as far as what the content and what it's about, or can you share what, what the book's about? No, not really, no. Um, as I said before, uh, You've got five young people starting off in life. They've all finished their schooling. And they think they're making choices, their own free will. What they don't realize is there's two competing sets of gods that are at war with each other. It's an urban fantasy. And one set of gods, which we call the evil gods, are sending temptations their way to make them uh, make choices that are more in their self interest than in the better good for the community as a whole. And the other set of gods, they're not really good gods. They're just indifferent to the whole thing. But when they realize what a mess the bad gods are making, they start to try to rescue the young people from, from their situation as well. Okay. So there's, there's a little underlying element of comedy below all the drama. I can imagine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Does each individual character in there, do they have like, do they have both gods or is there one that favors the one god and god group of gods and another person that the character that favors the other group of gods? They are, okay, I guess in a way too, it's actually a mystery as well as an urban fantasy because young people are just slowly learning, especially from the main character, John, that there are these gods because as a boy, see, I don't like about to weigh too much, but it's a bit of an accident started having dreams, and when he explained to uh, the adults, yeah, okay, these weird dreams, they thought, oh, just the accident. But as it turns out, the, the God sort of, how can I put this? He engineered the accident, put the visions in his head of what's going on, so that uh, other people around him wouldn't be able to understand that. Okay. And it would only be John who could slowly figure out what's happened to him but he never quite did and so the evil gods when they found out that the indifferent gods were giving him this warning about what's going on they tried to you know do away with him plus his friends and that's where the story starts rolling right right in the first chapter okay well it sounds like a fascinating book in that it's uh it's on the fence kind of thing between the uh you know the maybe between the agnostics, atheists, and the believers, the the religious type folks. It sounds like it's something for all of them. That too, and you know, I, I was starting from the environmental aspect of it all too, and it sort of drifted into that area. And when my editor uh, and publisher, who I met online, started talking to me about it, she's a very spiritual person herself. Um, but she that's that's getting into an area I wasn't really intending, but it happened. So, again, I don't like to do these too long, so I just got a couple more questions, and then I'm going to sure. beam it up to the universe there, and uh, we'll okay. see who can grab onto it. But is there any possibility of, like, a movie from the book? Because it sounds like it could be a very fascinating movie. Well, you know, um, what I've done, quite frankly, is uh, I'm self -pub Well, I shouldn't say self-published. Kaidi's now publishing me on Amazon and paperback. You just uploaded the um, Kindle version. You can watch on your Kindle, or if you download the free Kindle reading app, you can watch it, or you can read it on a computer. Um, but one of one thing that I've gotten from all my reading is don't write a 19th century novel for 21st century audiences. A lot of descriptive <laughs> narrative. You've got to write it like a movie so that people see the visual, as you were mentioning before. And I think it could be adapted into a movie someday. Fingers crossed. I don't have the money to finance myself, so 
We'll just see what happens with the book first. Well, the interesting thing about this internet kind of stuff, getting into that, is uh, you never know who sees these kind of things when they go flying around there with all these keywords and stuff. In fact, um, I did an interview earlier with a guy that I think I think he was from New York, and what he did was he uh, put together venture capitalists for movies. That was his mm. thing. <laughs> so yeah. you never know how it's going to go. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, Gary, I'm going to close this one off and put it in the can, as they say, and then beam it up to the universe. And I appreciate you taking the time. If there's uh, anything else you want to give us, like a, a website domain or something like that, that people can follow. Okay, we can go with uh, www.garywalters, G-A-R-Y-W-A-L-T-E-R-S, author.com. And there you'll find a little bit more about me. I want to help the first four chapters of my novel to that site so people can get a taste of what it is. There's 41 chapters. Um, I just received the paperback book and it's called Yay Big and it's uh, only about 290 pages so it's not a long read. Chapters are short. It's a quick read. I consider it summertime re reading even though it's a bit of a, of a heavy subject. And uh, I would say within seven days, I should have those first four chapters uploaded on my website. Okay. So, so it's GaryWaltersAuthor.com. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Great. Okay, Gary, I want you to, if you want to hang on, we can have, chat a little bit further, but I'm going to beam this one up. So I appreciate you taking the time again to be on Synergy Cafe. No problem. Uh, Peace. I have to quit running myself. So. Okay. See okay. you next time. Hopefully. Take care. Bye. All right.